All right, my good buddy Kevin Ford and I are down here at Fushan, Louisiana. We're down here for a media event that we're actually gonna be fishing tomorrow, but the sun has just set. Absolutely beautiful evening here. We probably got a five knot wind. So Kevin and I are gonna go see what we can catch under the lights. Kevin does a ton of nighttime fishing under lights. Kevin, what's the key to catching fish at night under lights? What are some of the most important things that you found in your years of doing this? The most important thing i found is having bait and decent water. And you know, a lot of people think this is the time of year where you catch these fish. You catch them at night, it's summertime with the shrimp and everything. But really, you can fish under these lights all year long in a lot of places and catch speckled trout. But the funny thing about night fishing, Todd, the other night, perfect example, I go night fishing. Tide's perfect, water's clean, wind's blowing five knots. Didn't see a shrimp, didn't see a fish. You're a hero or a zero sometimes, so hopefully tonight we're going to be a hero because I think there's more than one set of lights out here we can check out. My all-time favorite night bait is, ladies and gentlemen, this Meridine right here. This blue Meridine right here. It's a normal size Meridine. That is my all-time favorite bait. A couple of the other baits that, that have worked well here for me recently as we're getting stuff out is uh, gulp baits have worked well. This rattle shrimp has worked well. Um, H and H has got these uh, these little marshmallow things out, these double rigs, and they work extremely well too. And then you can just go back and go find some of this stuff, the stuff that somebody like bought in 1972, and it's in your closet. These small baits, they'll hit that. So a lot of double rigs. And then tonight, I'm gonna throw this rattle shrimp some, and I'm just gonna throw a 16th ounce death grip jig head, and on the end of it, I'm gonna put a, a little gulp shrimp with a, a glowing chartreuse tail and try that, and then try to find the right bait. So if you were a betting man, what would you say our chances of success are tonight? I'd say they're probably 80-20, with a 70% chance of that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like our chances. We'll see in just a minute, because let me tell you, it's getting late, it's starting to get dark, and a lot of the lights out here over the water are starting to pop on. That's a line from the Naked Gun, okay? When Nordberg was shot, they said, what was the chance of him surviving? And they said, the doctor said, Frank, it was 50-50 chance of that. There was a 50% chance, but only a 20% chance of that. <laughs> so, yeah. Whatever. All right, we did some hunting and found a camp with a light on it. It's not much of a light. Actually, it's lined up three lights. So let's see if it's gonna attract any fish. I'm throwing double rig H&H &H glass minnows, which may be a little bit too big, but we'll see. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. You think these lights are enough? They got three of them, look. You can go stand over there if you want. Where? Just go, look, go to your left. There's definitely some bait here. Oh yeah, Oh yeah, bait like crazy. Oh, there's fish here. There's fish here, Kevin. Oh, there, I got nailed. I got drilled. Oh, oh, shoot. You got him? Yeah. What are you throwing? How big is he? You think he's a keeper? No, he's not a keeper, he's too little. Oh, goodness. What's your technique? <laughs> All right, let me try the Ford technique. See that technique? You missed him? All right, there he is. Dude, that's definitely a keeper. That's definitely a keeper. All right, that's a 12 inch fish, 100%. So the you gonna keep them? Yeah, let's keep them. I got a white iron. We gotta, um, we gotta get a, we gotta get a ruler. Jim's gonna get it. Hey, Jim. I'm gonna let this fish go till you get a ruler. See you, buddy. I don't want to keep him if I'm not sure. You want to catch some big ones? No, I like catching small ones. Oh. Dude, you really gotta fish it fast. Well, that one won't make the cut.
What are you throwing, a Miradine? Yeah, I need to come over there with you. We need to be on the same dock. Wasn't a keeper? Dude, you're right. You just you just fish it like a cane pole. Is that a keeper? Yeah, I think he's a keeper. He's borderline. I don't. It's hard to tell. Nah, I'm not sure what that is. You can't get the. They're so feisty. No, you gotta get the. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. I don't know you're over there. Jim, you might want to put something else on besides that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Kevin, that might be a double. That might be a double keepers. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. All right, so all you do, cast it out, let it fall, and just twitch it hard in. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. All right, let's, all let's watch do, Kevin's technique. Go ahead. No, all you do is put it out like this, okay? No casting. That's cheating. Kevin, you so couldn't call your shot. Hold on. Right, you couldn't not, call your shot. Oh, it's not over with. And you know I've done it every cast so far. <laughs> right. Every single Oh, here we go. He was on it. Ah, he was on it. I I'm saw him hit it. All right, so here. That's This is the Kevin technique. Look okay. up. Just put it like that, and there you go. I missed it. So, Kevin, you do this a lot more than I do. Do you typically find better action at the edge of the light, or does it Normally, matter? The bigger fish are going to be at the edge of the light, normally. Right now, what I'm finding here is there's so many small fish that it's hard to tell where the bigger fish are. We kind of need to, to weed out some of these smaller fish. Look, I mean, it's every, every single cast. And what about as far as like dropping the bait and getting it below the light, or do you, do you kind of keep it high in the water column, or does it vary? You vary really because here, right here, you probably got about four or five feet of water where we are right now. And it gets really deep in the middle of this. So like where we're fishing right now, before this area was developed, was actually a big oyster flat years ago. So I'm sure there's still some of that still down. Look, I'm just reeling in slow and then they just hit me. I mean, it's just, I don't think it matters what you do. Sometimes when you have smaller fish, getting out of that light is important. Is better? Like the smaller fish will be in the light? The smaller fish will be in the light. Sometimes it's better to almost kind of pretend like you're working, just working the bottom. And a lot of times what I find is these fish like this, if you notice, the bites quit. I mean, all of a sudden, bites just quit. And I think we just saw a garfish, but I think a lot of times a big bull red or something will swim in here and it's kind of scattered these fish out. But they'll oh, typically come back, they'll right? Typically come, oh yeah. That might be a keeper, Kevin. I mean, look at that. That's a, no, that's not quite a keeper, but. Yeah, he's a little. You know, we did catch a white trout earlier. That's a speck. And that's a, that's a speck. So we'll put him back. But I mean, it's a lot of fun to come out here and, and catch these little guys and uh, pretty little fish. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by H&H &H Lore Company and by Bill Lewis and by Cito New Orleans and by Versamax Courts. And by Sportsman's Outfitters. I mean, look at this. I mean, they get bigger fish. The problem is right now, we just have a school of small fish at this light. So what we may have to do is may want to go to another light at some point tonight and see if we can find a, some bigger fish. Bigger fish. fish. So it's just a small school. Yeah. It's just like anything else. If you fish a group of birds or if you fish or if you're fishing a reef and you're catching small fish, what do you do? Move. Move. So it's the same. Night fishing is no different. Make like a cow and move. Oh, dog. <laughs> they hit it, don't they? On the H&H &H glass minnow. Probably not the biggest fish that ever hit an H&H &H glass minnow. Well, that's a good bait to fish at night. I mean, those oh, man. Settle down, dude. I'm gonna let you go. 
from this. Oh, he got him. Got, he had the night one. Oh, Kevin. Took my hand off. No, Look he's little. It. He's a small fish. That's a good fish. What is that? Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> I foul hooked him. Hooked wait. him in the ass. And I'm I got there. Jim's line. Let's see what we got here. Settle down. Settle down. You're making a mess. How do all these fish know that they got to be under 12 inches? What you tying on? Oh, I lost my bait, so I'm going to tie me on a number. How'd you lose it? You got oh. snagged? Yeah, I think you just, I think I just had enough. Oh. Got worn out. So what I'm gonna do here, Todd, is I'm gonna do a little experiment. What's that, Kevin? You know, you and I are big horror farming guys, okay? Uh-huh. Let's see how aggressive these fish are. I'm going braid to braid. No, I don't do that. You'll regret it. I don't think it matters tonight. Alright. Bet it matters for the big fish. I would need to go to a new light, huh? You wanna go check one out? I mean I got one down there. I don't know whose it is, but. Hopefully we don't get shot. Let's go check it out. All right, we're moving to a different light. This one kind of petered out. See him, look at him. You can see the actual fish. Look at him. You can see the trout. You see him? Oh, goodness. Look at the fish. Oh, Jim. Is that a keeper? That's a keeper. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Get him, Jim. You fishing a single rig too, huh? I think that's a keeper. Kevin, is you, are you scissors in here? You think they're in the top? All right, I reduced to a single rig. There we go. I say get away from you. There's one. Little guppy. Let me see why you miss so many. <clears throat> I have no more tail left on my gulp. Oh. There he is. Might be a keeper. Yep. Might be, maybe not. Definitely not a keeper. You felt a lot bigger, boy. Man, my bait is destroyed. Let's see if I can re-rig this thing. A slimy gulp on a death grip. That's not a. That's not a good combination. Well, guess I have to leave it. Can't get it off. So what I'm finding is you got to keep your rod high and run that bait just below, oh, just below the surface. Silhouetted against that light. And they are just tagging it. Now my bait is so poorly rigged. There we go. It slid down, so now I can rig it better. But it is coming apart. Falling apart. There's a million fish here. There he is. There he is. Not a keeper. Not a big one. Oh, he threw my bait off. Now I have no bait. 
Gotta go find some bait. I really should get to bed. I gotta get up tomorrow morning to go offshore fishing. This is hard to leave though. There he is, there he is. That's a keeper, that's a keeper. All right, definitely a keeper. Definitely a 12 inch fish, about a 13 inch fish actually. Yeah. You got a chest, you want him? Yeah, he's about, he's maybe 13. Look, I think you're better off, all the fish are over there in front of you. Like I think you're almost better off casting from here. Man, I lost my freaking tail. There he is. That one's a little short. No. Oh. There he is. Dude, I got just a little piece of a gulp. <laughs> That's all I got left. Man, if they're about two inches bigger, It'd be a slaughter. A slaughter. I've caught enough. I think I'm going to bed. <laughs>